Because of that sacrifice, that love, that we have life, light, and freedom within us. So we understand that Jesus is God's son. God said, I will come among all of us, each of us gathered in this room. I will come among you as a human, and I will lead you, and I will love on you. Jesus loved on us like we couldn't believe, and he healed us. And he showed us the way to who God truly is in our lives. Some people loved Jesus, the disciples, many who healed him, but a lot of people hated him. When we shared with the children, I asked the children, your children, how many of you love to be told what to do? You should have seen the sparseness of the hands being raised. There were, of course, some of your children were really wanting to please the pastor, so they went ahead and volunteered their hands. But we, we know that as humans in, the, in our sinful nature, we don't necessarily like to be told what to do. And Jesus was inviting those around him to, to consider doing something different, to living a different life. And a lot of people didn't like that. So as I told the children during vacation Bible school, we actually took Jesus and, and we ended his life. And then I asked the kids, and I asked all of us this today, why would Jesus let those people who didn't like him, why would he let them kill him? And I ask that today. Why would Jesus do this for us? Why wouldn't Jesus fight back or resist? And the truth is that without Jesus in our lives, we are often um, a lot like these things that I have up here. What good can this empty bag of food do? Can it feed anyone? Without Jesus, we are often like this empty bag of food. It has no value. It has no worth. Without Jesus, oftentimes, we are like this dirty rag. And I actually, for this specific purpose, went to Walmart. And I took this cloth and I rubbed some of the oil spots that had been left by our vehicles. What good can this rag do when it goes to wipe someone else off? All it does, and it's getting my fingers dirty again today, all it does is get us dirtier. It shares our filth. Without Jesus, we're like this. What good is this dried out marker? When our joy is dried out, when our faith, our hope, our assurance that there is something greater out there, that Jesus is the one who will be with us in every time, what good is this marker? Sure, we might get a little bit out of it, but for the most part... It's dried up. It has no value. And this is my favorite part because I got to break this cup myself. What good? Without Jesus, are we? If we're like this broken cup, how can we give our brother, our sister, our children a drink? This cup, again from experience, when it's broken, it's sharp. When we're broken without Jesus we have the capacity to be very sharp to hurt other people in tremendous ways. So when we ask the question, why would Jesus do this? Why would Jesus let that happen? It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't that evil overpowered good. It wasn't that hope was destroyed in the light of our uh, ambitious hearts. It was that Jesus gave us that gift was that Jesus came down and said, I love each and every one of you. You may not know my name, you may not care, you may not really, really be into this, but I love you, Jesus says. And so Jesus' blood on the cross swallowed up all of our ugliness, all of our filth, all of our brokenness. Swallowed up the things that we do to hurt each other. Swallowed up our selfish ambitions, our, our worship of me, 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 and as I told the kids, but it applies to us, the worship of our, our cell phones, our jobs, our status. Jesus swallowed that up. And three days later, though, Jesus rose from the dead, just as that video reminded us. And he reminded us, though, that in that rising, that all of our, our filth and our gunk wasn't powerful enough to overcome him. Because on day three, Jesus rose again. And with Jesus in our lives, we are able to feed others. We are able to make good in the world. With Jesus in our lives, we're able to wipe others' tears. We're able to comfort each other. We're able to give each other a drink. And we're able 
when we are filled with joy again to share of important messages with others. And so today we celebrate what Jesus has done. We celebrate the craziness that comes into vacation Bible school because of that life, that light, that freedom. We celebrate what it is doing for children around the world, sharing hope with them when all they perhaps saw as they were growing up was hopelessness. Paul reminds us in 1 John Chapter 1, verse 5, this is the message that we have heard from him and I announce to you. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim we have fellowship him with him and live in darkness, we are yet lying and do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way as Jesus is in the light, we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from every sin. If we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. And so today that message is simple. It is absolutely freeing to be able to welcome that joy, that life, that new light into our lives. And today we want to invite you to take that opportunity to re-welcome that into your lives, to commit to it once again, or perhaps to welcome it into your lives for the very first time, to celebrate that joy that's not just for children, but inviting us to join them as God's children and to celebrate that and to cast all of the other stuff away. As we celebrate this, let us join our hearts. Whether you are a guest today, whether the, all of this is new and unfamiliar, or whether you've been here a thousand times and perhaps your heart's a little bit hardened to it, let us just join our hearts together knowing that we are the body of Christ gathered here today.